police emergency. Call you through to the police. Can I help? Hi, I'm... I'm... Shut your fucking mouth! Peppy Brown aka Peppy is a former member of the Holly Street Gang in Hackney, allegedly previously being affiliated with the Hackney Boys when he was on road in the 1990s. He had an involvement in two or three separate deaths and became a significant figure within the Hackney Gang scene before his eventual imprisonment for murder in 2005. Would have many serious behavioural issues from early on, getting expelled from four schools and being sent to a special needs school, only returning to Holly Street during holidays. He would get 12 months in prison as a teenager for stabbing a man after an argument at a New Year's party. Pepe wasn't that involved in the conflict with TMD, Tottenham Mandem, instead focusing most of his attention to rival Hackney set LFB, London Fields Boys. This was a beef which still rages to this day but was only just becoming a serious issue by the early 2000s as sets within Hackney started to split and beef over drug territory. It's unknown what exactly what the catalyst for this split was but it's a mixture of factors and truth. A book written by a Holly Street member who knew Pepe claimed that he was stabbed at the age of 14 by LFB in a gang fight. While this may not be the first incident, it would soon escalate into a full-on war between the sides, although the author of the book remained close with certain LFB members who he was friends with before he joined such as J.D. Brissett, LFB. But it was not any gang beef which led to Pete's involvement in two separate deaths which were caused on the same day at Notting Hill Carnival in August 2000. On 28th of August 2000, Notting Hill Carnival was in full force. It had been three years since the last murder at the carnival and the reputation of the event as a safe place was improving. However, that would all change as Pepe and his Holly Street gang would turn up in their numbers. It was 7.30pm on the bank holiday Monday when they spotted a man who was wearing a gold chain. They had been targeting Asians specifically that day, including multiple robberies and assaults at market stall owners who were attempting to sell to the carnival. As they chased the man with the gold chain, his friend Abdul Bhatti attempted to fight the gang off. This only caused the gang to attack him savagely, leaving him with severe traumatic head injuries. He would lose his life only hours before his mother from Pakistan arrived in the UK and his course of death was due to a kick to his head while already on the ground. It's unknown if Pepe was the one to deliver this blow but his general involvement in the attack is beyond question. What is more complicated is the death of Greg Watson who was also murdered on the same day as Abdul. Police believe the deaths are connected but were unable to prove it and no one has ever been convicted for the murder or either man. Instead, Pepe and his gang would be charged and convicted for violent disorder along with many others from his gang. He would be sentenced to only 21 months for his role in the case and has never faced any further charges in relation to either men's deaths. But it would be what he did behind bars which would forever tarnish his name to many, as he took the stand against four defendants from Beckham. On 27th of November 2000, 10-year-old Dami Lola Taylor set off from Peckham Library back to his home on the North Peckham Estate. As he approached, he was approached by between two to four teenagers who stabbed him in his leg, which severed his artery and caused his death only 30 minutes later. Due to the lack of witnesses and the high-profile nature of such a young boy losing his life in the streets of South London, 
Police were determined to catch his killers by any means necessary. After arresting and charging the four teenagers they believed to be responsible, they were remanded to YOI Feltham, the same prison as Pepe was serving his sentence inside. Police knew they needed more and would enter Feltham looking for other potential witnesses. Pepe would strike a deal and agreed to testify that he heard one of the alleged killers admit to stabbing Dami Lola. It's unknown why he made this decision as he had a very short sentence but there are two or three potential reasons. Firstly, he could morally disagree with the killing of such a young child so didn't consider it snitching. Secondly, he could have been having a bad time in jail and thought this was a way of getting out early. He also could have got permission from his gang to testify, which is believable as they would accept him again as he touched road in early 2002. Either way, all four defendants were acquitted due to the lack of credibility of the witnesses. Eventually, after DNA techniques improved, three of them would go on trial again and faced manslaughter charges. One of them was acquitted as he argued that Dami Lola fell on a broken bottle which caused his death. The Preedy brothers both had a hung jury and would go to a third trial again on 23rd of June 2006 and they were eventually convicted and sentenced to just 8 years each, meaning they'd be released in 2010. It was also noted that police and prosecution had not followed their rules when investigating this case. They wanted these guys convicted and they didn't care how. Peep would eventually be released himself well before the retrials of the Preedy brothers who killed Dami Lola. He had regained his reputation as a serious player in Holy Street. Although his ops considered him a snitch and didn't take him that seriously. Eventually, he would become a leadership figure within the gang and by 2003, he was involved in a number of high-level offenses. These would include drug trafficking, armed robberies and eventually murder. After Aaron Salmon, Square Boy's boss, robbed an LFB member for his chain and car with a gun in front of his girlfriend, the tensions in the borough raised significantly. Aaron was a crack dealer who made around £1,000 a week from his line which he bought off a local drug boss called Yardy T as well as the robbery, only three days before the murder, two litres FB members spotted Pepe girlfriend and attempted pick up her. Pepe took this as a violation and would call another drug dealer called Mark Lawrence asking if he would ride on LFB with him. Mark agreed and brought a number of guns with him in a rucksack. Along with Pepe, Aaron, and more Holy Street members, they would ride to London Fields in order to enact revenge. After spotting JD playing pound up in the streets with other LFB members, they jumped out the ride and started shooting. JD was shot twice in his leg and chest, losing his life within minutes of the shooting as him and his friends tried to escape the bullets. Within hours it was common knowledge that Holly Street were responsible for the murder by LFB members and eventually Trident officers who went to round up all those they believed to be involved. There was three cars involved in the ride out but one of those that was stolen was linked to Pepe as the owner named him as the one who stole it. It led to Pepe and Aaron quickly getting charged with murder as the police looked for the others involved and more evidence to convict them. When Mark Lawrence was arrested at his home in Boreham Wood, which he used to sell drugs and live with his wife and child and would initially deny his involvement. Three others were also arrested including Danny Williams who claimed that Pepe, Aaron, and Mark had forced him to ride out with them and he was not involved in the murder. Another of them, named Jermaine Allen, 
had fled to Nottingham following threats from LFB members and blamed the others for forcing him to ride out as well. He claimed that LFB were killers but he was still more scared of Aaron and his guys which is why he came with them. Lots of people were already snitching and basically gave no chance to the others of beating the case at all. While inside, Pepe had pressured Mark to not testify but this was also futile as Mark agreed to change his story and testify on the others. All three who testified were from Clapton Square and were familiar with drug dealing and gang activity but they denied ganging up on the others to save themselves. Pepe spent most of the trial with his thumb in his mouth and didn't take it seriously, only getting angry when accused of certain things. It was a heated trial with the defendants separated for their own protection as Pepe, Aaron and Robbie Thomas kept silent but the others threw them in it. In fact, Robbie, Holly Street, had no connection to the case until Mark ultimately named him as well and gave him little chance of bossing case. As the trial concluded, Everyone was waiting to see the result. Williams and Allen both were acquitted following their evidence while Mark Lawrence was found guilty of murder along with Pepe and the rest. Pepe, Aaron, and Robbie would turn up to sentencing in August 2005 and receive 15 years to life each. They all laughed as they were taken off. However, Pepe was now 22 and was facing his earliest release in 2019 at the age of 36. On the Monday, Mark would be sentenced to just 10 years to life for his evidence he gave at trial. He spent his entire sentence riding Volvo and has relocated with police protection following his release. Pepe also had a tough time behind bars, especially when he bucked into feared killer DC, LFB who beat him up so bad he broke multiple bones in his body. The beef between LFB, ZT and Holly Street slash 98S has extended all the way to the modern day and the murder of JD became a key early moment in the beef which took it from gang fights and the occasional stabbing to an all-out war behind the sides. Many members have lost their lives since then as different gangs within Hackney backed each side. But the crazy part of this is the fact that Holly Street and London Fields are literally walking distance from each other and both reside within the E8 postcode. Many former friends have been split between this divide and many others have had their potential wasted to the streets. Pepe still remains a divisive figure within Hackney with a lot of enemies and a mixed reputation. But his reputation as a cold-blooded killer is deserved. Just look at the trail of bodies behind him.